want to turn to the book of Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew chapter 3. And in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Notice the message of John in verse 2. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then, turning over to chapter 4, verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Chapter 5, verse 3. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then if we turn to chapter 6, we have the words that Jesus taught in the pattern prayer. The prayer that Jesus taught our Father which art in heaven was not given for the purpose of repetition, although it is repeated in many places of worship week after week. But if we don't understand what we're praying, then it is vain repetition. There's nothing wrong in repeating the words that Jesus taught, but it's more important to understand what Jesus was teaching and to understand the principles of the prayer and the manner in which we are to pray. After this manner, therefore, verse 9, pray ye. <laughs> And don't forget that Jesus himself had earlier on in the same chapter warned against vain repetitions. Verse 7, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that, by, uh, their, that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And so we are told specifically in the preface, to the reference to the uh, Lord's Prayer or the Pattern Prayer, that we are not to uh, merely pray repetitious prayers. I know that prayers and prayer book and um, prayers that are read out can sometimes be helpful to people, but so important to have the desire for prayer in our hearts, isn't it? Yes. And the desire that is prompted by the Holy Spirit. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. God's will is being done in heaven. His will is not yet being done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not saying the will of God is not being done. I do not believe that anything can happen outside of the ultimate will and purpose of God. I believe in the sovereignty of God and I believe that sovereignty is total 
It is absolute. God is in control. He knows the end from the beginning. Praise the Lord. In his foreknowledge, there is nothing that he does not know. And it's not just that he knows what is going to take place, but he knows the who as well as the what. He knows us yeah. from the foundation of the world. Amen. And so God himself, by his foreknowledge, knows all things. By his elective purpose, he has chosen from before the foundation of the world. He has predestined a people to be conformed to the image of his son. Praise the Lord. And he is totally, sovereignly in control. But it is still true to say that his will is not being done in earth as it is in heaven. In heaven there is no sin. In heaven there is certainly is no sickness, disease or pain. There is no activity of evil. But I thank God that there is coming a day when this prayer will be answered. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise his name. And then if you go on to the last two verses of the same chapter verses 33 and 34 Jesus said but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof what are we seeing consistently here? In all of these references, from the beginning of the ministry of John the Baptist through to the ministry of Jesus himself, there's a continual emphasis on the theme of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not heaven, but it is God's will being done in earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord. So important to understand that. We tend to think, when we talk about God's kingdom, that the kingdom is heaven. No, praise God, it's the jurisdiction of heaven over the entirety of God's creation. Aren't you glad that God is going to reveal His power, His glory, His kingship, His dominion, and every part of his creation, not just this earth itself, but God has called man. We were talking a few weeks ago about the fact that man has been crowned with glory and honor and given dominion over all the works of God's hands. And yet we do not see all things subdued under him he's not talking about jesus he's talking about man because in the very next verse he says but we see jesus crowned with glory and honor why was jesus crowned with glory and honor because god ordained that you and i would be crowned with glory and honor and jesus came to be crowned with glory and honor in order that he might make the way where we could come back into our rightful place and position in the purpose of God. Praise His wonderful I remember name. as a young person, and uh, I was privileged to be amongst some young people, young men in particular in our fellowship that were keen, even as teenagers, to study the Word of God. And uh, we actually formed our own group on a Sunday afternoon and uh, we got together to pray and to study the Word of God. We even used to fast our lunch, although we made up for it later. <laughs> but you know, it was a big thing in those days, fasting for Sunday lunch, not having Sunday dinner. <laughs> but uh, it was 
for the purpose of getting around the Word of God. And I remember becoming increasingly fascinated, even as a teenager, by the subject of the Kingdom of God. And I thought, we're not hearing much about this. We're not getting taught much about this. We're being taught, you know, about being saved from sin and about having a home in heaven. But really what I was beginning to see in the Word of God was that Jesus was preaching and teaching and demonstrating His plan to manifest His kingdom and His glory right here on planet Earth. Praise God. Let's come on in. Another few chapters. In fact, you'll see the kingdom is referred to right the way through. The parables, for instance, of Jesus are parables of the kingdom of God. He's talking about the kingdom the whole of the time. Chapter 13, for instance. Then coming on to chapter 24, verse 14. And it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We've already seen what the Bible means when it talks about the kingdom of God. We've already seen that it's talking about God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. We go on to Mark's gospel, and it starts off in verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Then it talks about the ministry of John, the messenger. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And it goes on then to tell us in verses 14 and 15, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise the Lord. Now, that defines the meaning of the word gospel in Mark chapter 1, verse 1. It defines the meaning of the word gospel in Mark chapter 16, when Jesus commissioned his church to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God, telling them to preach the good news to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Why was it so important that the gospel would be confirmed with signs following? Because the signs following are the demonstration of the power of the kingdom of God in the earthly realm. When God saves the soul, He deals with the spiritual need of mankind bringing us back into relationship with himself but when that gospel was preached and confirmed with signs following it was the demonstration in the physical realm that the kingdom of God is not just spiritual but it is also to be manifested in the earthly and in the physical dimension we are to see the power and the demonstration of God's kingdom until the earth itself, praise God, is released from its bondage into the glorious liberty of the children of God. You and I 
are going to have a part in that. Praise the Lord. Uh, just jumping on to the book of Revelation to clarify that point. Chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign where? On the earth. On the earth. We shall reign on the earth. Praise God. So if you think that after this life you are going to not be anywhere else but in heaven and that you are going to be always and only in heaven. No, that's not true. No. God is going to cause his people. That's what the resurrection is all about. That's why we're going to need to be raised up in immortal bodies in order to be a part of that glorious kingdom right here upon the earth. Praise the Lord. And I'm so thankful because of the fact that God has called us to be kings and priests. Now that suggests that God has an ongoing purpose, doesn't it? Because kings have a role. Kings are there to bring about administration and to bring everything under the reign of that kingdom. Priests are there to function as a priestly ministry. And I thank God because of the fact that there is an ongoing purpose, and believe me, it's going on even beyond this day and this hour that we are living in. Listen to what the Word of God says in Revelation chapter 21. I'm overrunning myself, really, but just wanted to make these points. In Revelation 21, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. I've spoken on this before and shown you scriptures that confirm the fact that when God's talking about a new heaven and a new earth, it's in the same sense that you and I are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's the same you and me, but it's a different you and me. Mm. And when we stand before the Lord, praise God, in the likeness of Jesus Christ, there won't be one bit of the old you and me that is left. We will be totally new and yet it will still be you and it will still be me. Praise God. Because God is in the business of making all things new. So he can take a former things and he can make them into new things. The whole plan and purpose of God is based on regeneration, new birth. Praise the Lord. He's given us and brought us into a new relationship, a new birth process is in operation in our lives. And although we are born again and we are the children we do of develop God. from the milk to the meat of the word of God in this very life that we're living in, yet the process of our being born will not be complete until that adoption when we are adopted into the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not just adopting somebody from another family, but it is God adopting us into his own family and recognizing us and saying, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter. I am acknowledging you, you are mine, praise the Lord. And the Lord is going to cause us to be in the likeness and in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
And our regeneration will be total. It will be complete when we stand in His likeness. Praise His wonderful name. And I thank the Lord because of the fact that when that day takes place, what a glorious day it will be. Yeah. For the scripture said that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now there never was death. There never was pain. There never was sorrow in heaven. But the Lord is talking about the new heavens. And it's talking, uh, when he talks about the heavens, sometimes it's talking about the skies, the planets, the um, terrestrial heavens. And God is going to cause the entirety of the heavens, the earth's atmosphere itself and the terrestrial heavens and the whole of uh, the heavens of God's creation to be renewed totally and completely so that there's not one element of contamination, not one element of anything that is corruptible in God's creation. And God will wipe away all tears. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. And coming on to chapter 22, the first three verses, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and of either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. There never was a curse in heaven. It's talking about the earth. Now think about it. If this was a... Um, as some people think when it talks about new heaven and new earth that God started... Creation all over again, Just done away with this earth as it is. Then why would he say there shall be no more curse? Uh, the only uh, way in which that can make any sense is that he's talking about an earth which once had a curse, but is now a new earth that has been changed and regenerated and made new, and there is no more death. No more sorrow, no more sadness, no more pain, no more curse, praise the Lord. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Praise God. You know, the Bible tells us that when Jesus shall reign, there's going to be a people that are going to come. And they're going to worship the Lord. Praise they, God. Key to blessing is going to be as they come and as they worship the Lord. And I believe that uh, those that are called to be kings and priests unto God have a vital role to play in the fulfillment of this great and mighty work. Praise God. We are a royal priesthood right now, aren't we, in Christ Jesus. But I believe that um, that ministry in this day and in this hour is only just beginning. But there is coming a day and an hour Praise the Lord when the heavens and the earth are going to be brought into a place of total newness. Yes. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah centuries ago and said, Behold, I make new heavens. I create new heavens and a new earth. And it didn't look like it, but God has been in the process of doing it all the time. Amen. And it looks as though um, creation is in a terrible mess at this moment, but the Word of God tells us it's groaning and travailing in birth pangs to be brought into a new and a glorious day when creation itself is going to be loosed from its bondage. Oh yes, there is going to be fire. Oh yes, there is going to be destruction and everything as we know it now is going to be done away with. But if it all happened in a moment of time, there would be nothing left. It would be total liquidation in the fullest sense of the word. 
But God, the day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And the day of the Lord is coming in which these events are going to take place. But they won't happen in just a moment of time, but it will be a process of time. A process whereby the uh, whole of creation is going to be baptized, not this time by water, but by fire. And there, there's going to be a new creation coming forth through that process in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But those that know the Lord, they're going to, it's going to be a wonderful day for them. I'm going to go back now to um, the Old Testament, the last chapter of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, chapter 4. For behold, the day of the Lord cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. We're talking about that on Sunday, weren't we? A terrible day of judgment and the outpouring of the fire and the wrath of God. But a thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, the word of God said. God is going to cause a people to come through. Here's the promise. Right in the midst of all that, unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And as I look at all the great deliverances of God throughout the Word of God, it's always the same. The pattern is always the same. And those that try to make prophecy say something different are not basing it upon the principles of the Word of God. Every time God brought about deliverance, He preserved His people right in the midst of the day of trouble. Right in the midst of the terrible events that would come upon the earth. And God gets glory by the preservation of His people in the darkest hour of, uh, darkest hours of human history. And we are approaching the darkest hour day I believe in human history that ever has been but the Bible tells us there is coming a day when it shall be neither dark nor light but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light praise God through the darkest night of the darkest day God is going to cause there to be a birthing of a new day of light and glory. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. But isn't it exciting to know that we are a part of something. And we're not just going to go up and sit on clouds. and uh, Or uh, maybe uh, find somewhere to fish for the next uh, few billion years. You know. <laughs> that could be boring, couldn't it? <laughs> and we're not just going to sit and play harps. But uh, God has called us for a great purpose. Praise the Lord. He's called us for his kingdom purpose and his kingdom plan. Praise his wonderful name. And I'm so glad because we are called to be part of what the Lord is going to do. And the scripture tells us, and I'll just finish on that one verse back in Revelation again. Well, we're in the last book of the Old Testament a moment ago. Now we're back in the last book of the New Testament. In verse 3, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of man is with God, and they shall dwell with him. Did I read that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way a lot of people think. It reads. <laughs> they probably don't actually quote it that way, but that is the mindset of many people. Behold, the tabernacle of man is with God, and they will dwell with him. But it doesn't say that. It says in verse 2, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. No wonder David said, What is man 
that thou art mindful of him, or the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. No wonder men of God have cried out and said, Lord, you know, little bitty earth, when you look at the universe, what is this earth? What is this earth in comparison with creation? The uh, seeming infinity of the galaxies and the planets, the worlds, the orbits that are in creation. And yet out of it all, for his own purpose, God has chosen and has created this earth for a purpose. And the scripture said, the tabernacle of God is with men and he shall dwell with them. And they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just thank the Lord for his great plan and his great purpose. Blessed be his wonderful name. His will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's coming a day when heaven and earth are going to be reunited, joined together as it were in marriage. Praise God. Just as the people of God are going to be married as a bride, to the Lamb. I thank God because there's going to be a marriage, as it were, between the earthly and the heavenly until there's no more corruption, no more curse. But everything is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And there is coming a day when no man shall say unto his neighbor, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Every descending voice will have been put down. And the Lord himself shall reign. Hallelujah. And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. As truly as I live, oh.